You have written a piece about the debt ceiling, uh, the debt ceiling battle in an op-ed for the Boston Globe, and it's entitled The Republican Con on the Debt Ceiling. And mm -hmm. in it, you write in part this, Senator Warren, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and extremist Republicans are running a con game. They claim their plan to use the debt ceiling to trigger global economic chaos is about fiscal responsibility. It's not. The House Republican plan for the debt ceiling is about protecting the wealthy and the well-connected from paying their fair share in taxes. Nothing more, nothing less. Here is the ultimate irony of today's Republican scam. Without years of Republican handouts to the wealthy, there would be no debt ceiling hostage to take. Serious conversations about reducing the national debt should start here. Repeal the 2017 Trump tax giveaways to the wealthy. Second, stitch up the last minute loopholes punched in the 15% minimum tax on tax dodging billion dollar corporations and give extra bite to taxes on corporate stock buybacks designed to goose up CEO pay. Third, shut down tax havens for big multinational corporations. Fourth, ask billionaires to pay taxes on their growing piles of wealth. Finally, say no to the ridiculous and unpopular Republican schemes mm -hmm. to increase our national debt. Senator, as you know, and wow. I think a lot of people kind watching of know, yeah. uh, when you raise a debt ceiling, you're not talking about future debt. You're talking about the debt already incurred and all of those things you were just talking about. So much uh -huh. of it is what actually Congress will be paying off the tax Trump giveaways to the richest Americans, the billionaires and the multinational corporations and their and their stock buybacks. You know, in fact, Joe, it's exactly that. If the Republicans had not pushed just two things, the Republican tax cuts that went mostly to those at the very top and the biggest corporations and hollowing out the IRS specifically so they could not hold wealthy tax cheats accountable, wouldn't be able to audit them. If those two things had not happened, then we wouldn't even hit the debt ceiling at any time during the first Biden administration. Think about that. This is a manufactured crisis. And the real issue at stake here is who's going to pay to run this government? The Republicans are real clear on that not the rich folks. The first thing they have done after they, they took over the House is they wanted to pass a bill to make it easier for wealthy tax cheats to get away with it. And they're now going to put forward a proposal to put a 30 percent nationwide sales tax in place. And that's on everything from rent to groceries to diapers to car repairs. And do what? Cut taxes for those at the very top. That's not going to bring down our deficit. It's not going to bring down the national debt. The Republicans are there to try to protect the wealthy. And my point about this is to say to everybody else, we got to call the Republicans out on this. They are threatening to wreck our entire economy just to protect a wealthy handful. If this were really about the national debt, then there are plenty of places we could go to stitch up loopholes like no more of these tax havens abroad, that we could get that under control. But that is not where the Republicans want to go. Instead, they want to cut Social Security. They want to cut Medicare. Why? So they can protect the rich folks. And we just we got to put a stop to this. Senator Warren, it's Lawrence O'Donnell. Why are we here now? Why didn't uh, Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer run a debt ceiling increase uh, through both bodies in a lame duck session last month in December? Look, I, I pushed as hard as I possibly could for that. But uh, it's hard to get all the votes together. And it's, you know this as well as anyone. It is hard in Congress when the problem is not staring you right in the face uh, to go ahead and take on the burden of trying to get through an increase in the debt ceiling. I want to lay this, though. I, I understand your point about our being in the majority. I pushed it myself. But do keep in mind, it's Mitch McConnell who said no, 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 no on raising the debt ceiling. They were fine 
with raising the debt ceiling when Donald Trump was president. In fact, the Republicans voted three times to raise the debt ceiling in the four years of the Trump administration. No must, no fuss, just get it done. But once we've got a Democrat in the White House, now, no, nah, they don't want to raise the debt ceiling. They want to create as much economic chaos as they can and keep offering tax cuts to their rich buddies. So I think that's the political dynamics of what's going on here. Senator, we're talking about governing. We're talking about getting things done, as you just pointed out. I want to read you just two paragraphs from the front page of the New York Times this morning. A Jonathan Swan piece titled, Speaker's Union with Firebrand May Shape GOP. Days after he won his gavel in a protracted fight with hard-right Republicans, Speaker Kevin McCarthy gushed to a friend about the ironclad bond he had developed with an unlikely ally in his battle for political survival, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia. Quote, oh. I will never leave that woman, Mr. McCarthy, a California Republican, told the friend, quote, I will always take care of her, unquote. What does that bode for a sensible resolution to, the, to any crisis, never mind the debt crisis? That's right. And, and you've put it right to any problems that we face. You know, here's the problem we've got now with this House of Representatives. And that is there are a group of people there who, who embrace the chaos because they have exactly one goal in mind, get Donald Trump reelected. And if a lot of chaos, if the next two years are nothing but sturm and drang, if there are cuts to Social Security that they can turn around then and blame on the Democrats, if, if, there's, if the economy goes over a cliff, if the worldwide economy blows up, there are Republicans, particularly in the House, who think, hey, that's gonna make it easier to get our guy back in the White House. And so long as that's their mindset, that's not a position of negotiating to try to make things better, safer in this country, to make this country work better for hardworking families who, who get up every day and just, just want to be able to do their work, pay their bills, and keep going. We need a government on their side, not a government mm -hmm. that's in total chaos and turmoil. And I fear that um, we've got Republicans in the House who, who embrace the turmoil and think that's politically uh, going to advance their interests. That really worries me. So, uh, Senator, um, I think we, we've talked about this a lot, and we, we, we agree, Republicans. Uh, have been over backwards trying to help billionaires, trying to help multinational corporations, mm -hmm. trying to slash their taxes over and over again. Uh, they should be focusing on working Americans, small business owners, entrepreneurs starting up. They just don't do it. I want to be a, I believe the Democrats are going to take control of the House again in a couple of years because of the extremism going on. And I want to circle back as we move in that direction to something we talked about before. And that is uh, my disappointment, and I know your disappointment, with um, how some Democrats behaved on the Ways and Means Committee in the House of Representatives uh, by giving breaks, along with all Republicans, to, to multinational corporations and billionaires. Like, they had a chance mm -hmm. to pass a lot of what you were talking about. And I must say... Um, I was shocked they didn't do more when they had that opportunity. First of all, why? You know, though, and secondly, how, how do we plan ahead for the next couple of years? Again, I'm not asking that, that, that the income redistribution is massive. I just want multinational corporations and billionaires to pay at least as much of a tax rate as their clerical workers pay. <laughs> Exactly. So let's first do the glass half full. And keep in mind that last August, the Democrats got through without a single Republican vote, a 15% corporate minimum tax. And that is the first time in 30 years that taxes have been raised on these giant corporations. And what it means going forward, this is something I've worked on for a very long time, it means going forward that giant corporations like Amazon that 
report $11 billion in profits and then turn around and pay zero in taxes won't be able to do that anymore. That we've actually set it up to say they're going to have to pay and they're going to have to pay something here. And that's going to help a lot. It's going to raise a lot of revenue. Now we've got in front of us the next steps. So, for example, Europe has now uh, adopted a corporate minimum international tax to cut out these tax havens. And so the United States could follow suit and say, you know what, there's not only a 15 percent corporate minimum on what you earn here, there's a 15 percent minimum you got to pay somewhere around the world. You can't hide out in these tax havens and protect your profits. Europeans have headed there. Great Britain is going there. The Asians are now working on this. The Asian countries are. It's time for the United States to do that. Six hundred billion dollars to help support our country, to help pay, to keep our country going. There are so many places that it's just a no brainer. And here's the thing. For so long, people have said taxes. I don't want to have to talk about taxes. Democrats have backed off. No. Americans understand we need a system that's fairer. They keep paying, middle class families keep paying. It's those at the very top who are not paying. And we've got a chance now, we're going to do it in the Senate, I hope, to push forward just these common sense proposals. And then, you know, it's a very narrow majority in the, in the House. Let's see if we can pick up a few responsible Republicans to join with our Democrats and advance some more of these proposals that really are about putting the United States on a more level playing field, little businesses to big businesses, and also just who's going to pay to keep this country running.